Hi guys, so I played a bit of chess this morning, as I like to do, and uh, I played 2-1-2 against a, a strong opponent, Al Cortez from the Philippines, um, and I thought I'd like to share these two games with you, because I think they're both kind of beautiful, and there is a bit of a theme of, um, well, which we'll, we'll, we'll uh, let that evolve as, as we go, but to do with pawns, well, I want to be looking at pawn structure. Um, and how your pawn structure supports the rest of your development and protects your, your king. So um, here's the first game. So we start off uh, both 30 minute rapid, which, which is the right thing to do. And, you know, something else that is really striking me at the moment is for those of us who are wanting to improve our ratings, and especially if you're trying to get beyond the, the 1000 rating mark, um, is, is to play in this kind of way. So I give myself that time in the morning when I know I can completely focus, and I, I thought I'm gonna play one or two games, that's it. So I played one and then the, he challenged me back, so we played another one. Um, but it's better, if you're trying to increase your rating, it's better to play one game and win it than to play five games and lose three of them. If you play five, lose three, your rating is likely to go down depending on, on who you've played. Much better to focus on, it, even if it's one game a day, but make sure your environment is right. Make sure you can focus. Make sure you're awake and give it everything and take your time. Rushing is the number one enemy uh, when you're trying to break 1,000. So let's go ahead and have a look at this game. <clears throat> so E4, E5, King's Pawn opening. Knight to F3, pretty standard. And this one... This took me by surprise. It's early queen move, uh, queen to f6. It's called the McC McConnell defense, um, according to chess.com, but uh, it's not something that's familiar to me. And it seems to break some of the rules of openings. Um, obviously, early queen uh, development is generally not advisable, although I don't have a way to start attacking the queen on f6 right now. But the other thing I noticed as well is that the um, the queen is blocking off a very natural square on f6 for black's knight. Okay, so I develop as usual, attacking f7 now with the uh, light square bishop. This this will then allow me to play d3 at some point, um, which means that my light square bishop is going to be outside my light squared pawn chain, and then my dark squared bishop can move through the pawn chain, it can either be behind it or in front of it as well. Um, obviously, black plays g, uh, sorry, h6 in order to prevent knight to g5, and then possibly knight to f7, which would be unpleasant for black, so that's a prophylactic move. I develop my other knight, because uh, I, also I've got ideas here of moving knight to d5, attacking the queen, and also threatening the c7 classic fork there on the king and the rook. Black here develops c6. Now I'm guessing at this point that this is to prepare for d5. So I go ahead and push d3 anyway. I have now got a really, really classic, uh, straightforward, solid defense. And look look at my pawns. This is something that I'm noticing a lot recently, right? My my pawns on this uh, on this second rank I've got three on this side, three on the king side. Right, they are solid. Black, on the other hand, has got two of his um, non-center pawns have already moved at this point. Okay, so we're just keeping an eye on pawns in this game. Black now plays d6, which is a bit of a surprise because I was expecting d5. Now this does allow the light squared bishop to come out, but it doesn't allow the dark squared bishop to come out, and I don't really see. A uh, great point, although if we come here, I have got a pawn, a bishop, and a knight on that square. Um, so I'm now thinking, right, where is my black, my dark square bishop going to go? Uh, e3 isn't very useful, it's only looking at a7, it's looking completely away from the king, and that I'm thinking the king's going to castle short. Um, can't go there, can't go there, so I'm, I want to do something useful with my dark square bishop, so I move b3 to prepare for either the fianchetto on b2 or even 
uh, bishop to a3 potentially. Now this is an error on my part, I've overlooked this. Um, my, light, my light square bishop is now trapped. I did consider um, <clears throat> previously if black had played d5 then I knew that I could take with the pawn and that I would be okay. Um, black played uh, d6 and I took my eye off that. I, didn't, I thought the threat had gone. Um, it wasn't an issue. Didn't realize that b5 was possible. I just didn't scan the whole board, didn't look. So I'm, I'm going to drop a piece, whatever happens here. So what I decide is to go on the attack. Now, uh, knight to d5, I think, is a, is a decent move. It's attacking black's queen. And if pawn takes on d5, then I recapture with the bishop. And black is going to have trouble defending this rook and this bishop if the bishop moves in front. Because um, the queen can't move to e7 to defend. So uh, black thought about that for a while, over 30 seconds, I think, um, and then moves <clears throat> the queen back to d8. So am I out of trouble? No, I have I've still got now two pieces, two minor pieces under attack. So I decide the lesser of two evils is to take on b5 and expect that black's going to recapture and take the bishop rather than the knight. I'm liking this knight. I think this knight on d5 is now in a pretty strong position. There's no pawn that can threaten this knight anymore. So I think, you know, given the two scenarios, I would be happy. I was happier with black capturing the bishop. So I move the knight back. And now we're starting to look like we've got quite a solid defense here around my king. Okay, so king protection is definitely a theme. White plays bishop b7, which isn't much of a threat, because it's looking at the, the pawn there at the end of my pawn chain. So it, it can't move to here even, so I'm not sure. So I castle, white pushes a6, and I now move my bishop to a3, thinking that if this pawn ever moves, then I can go and capture the bishop, force the king to move, and that the king's then going to have to waste time trying to uh, protect his king because he can't castle. This, I think, is loose. It's uh, Black is looking to castle kingside. There's no way he's going to castle queenside and put his king on c8, right? That's just, that's just ridiculous. Um, and for me, I, I, I'm always more comfortable if I can keep my, my king's pawns <coughs> there right on, on the rank in front of my king, uh, where my king can protect them. So I move my bishop back, thinking that if this tension in the middle is resolved, you know, this pawn ever moves, I'm now eyeing down on his rook. He spots that, moves the bishop in the way. I'm now there thinking, okay, let's, let's break through in the center. My king is safe. Black's king is not safe. And if these pawns can clear the, themselves out of the way, then I am very close to getting my rooks into the game. So particularly rook on f8 could come across and I think it is now time to start busting open this position. I do realize that I'm leaving e4 undefended at this point. Black makes another pawn push. And if you look at this board, you have to say, um, Black is, is really, really behind on development. All he's got out in the board is his two bishops. And he's pushed all of his pawns off the seventh rank. All of them. Now, so he started, he's starting to get a lot of space around that king. And I would feel nervous. So I come in to threaten g6, threaten the rook. Even if he pushes g6, I can dive in and uh, make the rook move. Um, Black then jumps in and grabs the e4 pawn. So maybe... A better move here would have been to play d5 first, but I didn't really feel like I wanted to lock up the, the middle of the board at this point, because I think opening up the middle of the board is going to benefit me more than it benefits black, because black hasn't got his king safe. Okay, so I go there. I didn't notice this move. Bishop comes in, grabs the pawn, because it also defends g6, and I should have thought about that. So I decide to kick the bishop away. 
the bishop has to move back on this diagonal or else I'll be able to take it. Um, so he chooses not to do that. Now I have a decision to make. This is one of those key points. I could maybe move my knight to f5 and if the bishop takes I recapture with my other knight. That's not a bad idea. But I also have an opportunity to capture the bishop in the middle of the board and open up the f-file for my rook. So that's what I decide to do. I think that, you know, I'm going to have a semi-open file for my rook. I'm going to have the pawn nearer the middle of the board. And when black recaptures, he's going to have now doubled isolated pawns on the h-file. Um, so his position just became weaker. And I don't think he did himself any favours with that. So I decide to come in with check. I realise there's no piece that can block the check. So now let's make, let's force that king to move. King moves, knight comes in with another check. King moves again. And now <clears throat> this is quite an important and useful principle to remember. Centralising your rooks. Once your development is complete and you are starting to think about your attack in the game, bring, try and bring your rooks to the D and E files if you can because that's um, very, they're very likely to have a bigger influence on the, on the game from there. Um, Black brings out his knight. So I have an option here of exchanging knights, or I have an option of capturing his dark squared bishop. I do capture his dark squared bishop. I mean, we have to say that dark squared bishop is not a good piece at the moment. It's completely blocked off. It can't move anywhere. Um, however, I'm thinking that if I if I capture it, I'm going to force his king to recapture. That is bringing his king slightly out into the open. Um, I've got then possibilities of queen and rook attacking this pawn on f6. So, and the other thing is to remember, I've still got a, one bishop on the board. If this comes down to an end game, the board starts to open up. My my extra bishop is going to be useful. So. I'm happy at this point to get rid of his dark square bishop, keep mine on the board. There goes the king. I decide to continue with my pan plan of busting open the center. Now a serious threat here of pawn takes f6, which would win the knight. Uh, and black throws in a, a pointless check, really. Moving the queen away from the action where it can't really help with the defense. And uh, I move my king out of the way. He captures with a pawn. And here I realize, right, this is, this is important. I've got 23 minutes on the clock. Loads and loads and loads of time to think. So use your time to think. I realize if I capture this pawn on e5, if this pawn recaptures, I can drop my queen into f7, and that's checkmate. So to his credit, Black takes 45 seconds, thinks this through, and realizes that it would be mate. So brings the knight in to uh, defend that pawn. Okay, What he doesn't realize, he should have spent a little bit longer than 45 seconds, because he's still got 24 minutes on the clock. I take my time, I'm looking at the board, and I realize actually he's blundered. And these things... These, these are the, the, the moves and the opportunities that I find are so often missed at, um, at lower levels because you're too focused on like, part of the board where you're watching and you, fail, you can fail to notice other things. And obviously his knight on d7 is unprotected, so I grab that with my rook. I know my king is safe. There's no way his queen can dive in. He doesn't have a check, so I'm, I'm happy at this point. He brings his rook over. I capture the knight with another check, and this really is going to be game over very shortly. So queen to g6, the only move available is now king to h8, and then um, and that would be checkmate with uh, queen to h7. So he resigns the game at this point. Let's look at game number two. So you can, you can see... Um, Look at the situation at the end of the game. My king is pretty cosy and safe here in the corner with his pawns still in front of him. Black has made some sloppy pawn moves and that has resulted in an attacking opportunity for me. Okay, let's have a look at the second game. So uh, my opponent challenged me back and we decided to... I, I accepted, so now I'm playing black. 
He starts with King's Pawn, and I play Scandinavian with D5. Um, by the way, if you are a London player, if you like playing the London system as white, which is very, very solid, particularly at this level, absolutely viable, then you might think about playing the Scandinavian as black, because just watch how this game in, unfolds. I quite often see this. So, you know, sometimes, quite often, uh, white will capture the pawn on d5, um, but very often as well, I'm seeing this quite a lot, pushing e5 and thinking that he'll get to play d4 later on and enjoy more space in the center. <clears throat> so what I tend to do here is develop my bishop, plays d4, and then I can play e6. And what you're seeing here is a mirror image of the London system, but on black's part. So black plays a3, trying to prevent that bishop to b4. Then I go ahead and complete my pyramid with c6. Brings his bishop out. I bring my queen out because moving that bishop has uh, undefended b2. So and, and also, because he's blocked off his queen, I'm also attacking d4. There's only one good move. White finds it, putting the bishop in between the two pawns, protecting them both. Good move. Now, this is a, a bit of a breakaway from the London thing. That what I find is that it's a bit annoying having this, this pawn here on, on e5. Um, it prevents, you know, my bishop, my dark square bishop has now really got nowhere to go to on that side of the board. Uh, so I, I figure let's push f pawn and try and resolve that tension, get rid of that pawn. Um, white says, no, you can't. I'm going to defend it with f4. I bring my knight out. This is the classic London system position for the Queen's Knight. And White's now thinking, again, can you see how many pawn moves he's made compared to, compared to mine? Uh, White has made, so this is move eight, okay, and White has made one, two, three, four, five, six pawn moves in his first eight moves. Okay, I have made four, and that's important. <clears throat> means that I have three pieces out in the board, white only has one. So I'm ahead on development. And I think this was a rash move. I, I don't see the point of this. I mean, yes, the, if the bishop might, be, might retreat, he can push f5, but too many, too many pawn moves. So what he doesn't realize is that I've got this attack on the rook. There's, uh, it's not easy to defend, so he has to move his knight out to f3. So that knight is now... <clears throat> pinned itself and uh, I'm quite comfortable again with my position again just look at the pawns if nothing else just look at the pawns I've got a nice solid structure right it's a it's a pointy triangle pointing up in the middle white's pawns are everywhere he's making far too many pawn moves I bring my knight out because there's an undefended pawn here on g4 he defends that I develop my bishop. Now I've got options of castling either side and look at white's development, right? All these pieces still on square one, on the first rank. He's nowhere near castling. Okay, um, moves his rook across and I castle long. He's starting to push pawns up so I move my knight back. Uh, nothing wrong with maneuvering your knight around the board if you can find a better place to put it. So uh, he pushes the pawn forward and I decide to start resolving the tension in the middle with a capture. He captures and I did think about maybe kind of knight takes, pawn takes, knight takes but that would be kind of losing at this point. But look at all this this space um, on on white's king side of the board. Uh, now space is not necessarily a bad thing if you put your pieces into it, if you use it to you know, maneuver your pieces around, but he isn't doing that. He's created all this space by charging with his pawns all up the board, but his pieces aren't occupying that space. So, you know, this bishop here isn't looking at my king, this bishop here isn't looking at my king, this knight here is far away from my king. The queen's got, you know, back on square one, and his rooks are doing nothing at all. So I decide at this point, let's capture the knight. Queen recaptures. Now I take the pawn. Um, and because I realize that this pawn now on d4 is pinned, so if pawn captures, 
then my queen can dive in and grab the rook. White spots this. So goes the pawn down, and now I improve my knight. This is a really nice square for my knight. The, you know, that fifth rank from my side of the board is a great place to, to put a knight, um, especially when it's defended by a pawn there. So I'm quite comfortable with that. White retreats his queen again. I think, okay, an exchange of pawns on this side of the board is not going to do me any harm at all. I've got options of my queen coming out. Um, let's open up the position. My king is safe. Again, two games in, in a row, right? I've got my king safe. White has been far too busy charging up the board with his pawns and has neglected king safety. He makes a, a push towards my knight. Again, I would call that an unnecessary pawn move, wouldn't you? You know, he's, he's now left this bishop on c3 is undefended at this point. So I've moved my knight out of the way and my knight has a nice option to come in here to e4, attacking the bishop. Um, he pushes his rook for some reason, not quite sure why. And I move my knight forwards, attacking the... Uh, the bishop's defended by the knight actually, isn't it? <clears throat> Brings his queen out. I bring my rook across to the open f file, and he retreats with his bishop. But it, this is really already this is a horrible position for for White to be in. Um, I take the pawn, so now I'm, I've got ideas of attacking on the back rank with my rook. Recaptures the pawn, um, so I've got two attackers here uh, that could uh, attack that. But White has two defenders, so it. Not really my interest to take. Um, so I come here, drop my rook all the way into h1. So now I've got two rooks looking at the bishop there on f1. The king can't move out of the way. The bishop is actually pinned. Brings his knight in to defend. I capture the knight and he recaptures with the king. Uh, if he'd recaptured with the queen, I could have just grabbed the uh, bishop anyway with check. Then the king would have had to move out of the way, and then I could have exchanged rooks on a1. He recaptures with the king, which is the, the better move. Now I'm looking for ideas of how I can uh, attack both queen and king, uh, skewering the queen, sorry, pinning the queen. Um, but there's no real option for that. But I do realize that I can just go ahead and grab the bishop on, on f1, because it's only defended by the rook. So I've got two attackers against one defender. White probably foolishly decides to exchange. I mean, he's, he's down in material at this point, so generally you want to keep uh, more pieces on the board. I recapture with a rook because I realize my king is safe. Uh, neither queen nor rook can jump back onto this back rank, but if they, if they did, I've got bishop there and even queen that can come in in defense, and also I've got king to c7 so pretty happy at this point um, white grabs a loose pawn which I which I was aware of I bring my queen back to defend the bishop and the knight moves his king across I just simply simply drop my rook back to safety there's no point in overextending yourself when you're in a commanding position in the game uh, white moves his queen across which I don't really understand. I simply, again, move my rook across to um, defend the pawn. Obviously, that was the point of White's move. Um, White tries to develop his bishop. Now I'm lining up for a discovered attack. If I can move this bishop, say, a capture there on a3, then I'll win uh, White's bishop. White is smart to that one, so he moves his king out of the way. And uh, but he doesn't realize that um, you know, when I move my queen there, I'm also attacking his queen. So I thought an exchange of queens is in my favor at this time. Uh, but white failed to look at every piece on the board. There's not that many pieces on the board and you've got 23 minutes. Okay, Take one of those minutes if you need to. Take 30 seconds. Look at every piece on the board. What is attacked? What is defended? What isn't defended? And so I take his queen. And there you go, that's the end of the game. But again, look at the situation at the end of the game. Right? I didn't put White's pawns where they are. White chose to throw his pawns up the board twice in two games. I've got a safe king twice in two games. 
and uh, go on for two quite nice, uh, quite nice victories. So, you know, if, you, if you're going to take anything from this, just remember, pawns can't move backwards. If you move a pawn up the board, it's staying up the board, okay? And your pawn structure is the skeleton of your position. Your pieces can move around, your pieces can move back and forth and back and forth like, like they have done, but your pawns, once moved, stay moved. They can't retreat. They can only keep going forward, capture or be captured, maybe turn into a, a queen one day, but you've really got to guard uh, jealously your, your pawn structure um, if you want to be winning games. Simple as that, guys. See you later.